Hey guys, this is KSP with Tape, and today you join me for episode 48 of KSP Road to Exploration, and today we start with possibly the most important launch since the launch of Callisto 1, the first mission to the moon. This is the first launch of the first mission to Duna. Yes, finally I'm actually launching it atop a brand new rocket. This is the Pulsar Y. It is a two-stage monster capable of taking around 55 tons possibly 60 uh, to low carbon orbit, depending on the size of the fairing. Obviously the fairing is pretty massive today um, because it is taking the core of the Duna Explorer spacecraft or whatever I ended up calling it, uh, which I'm actually gonna leave to you. Anyway, we've decoupled the uh, first stage now, I'm just gonna push on into orbit. Um, with the second stage jettison the fairing and you can see it in well most of its glory right now it's totally not done this is just the core it is the control module the lab the life support the propulsion the secondary propulsion the power and the cooling and the docking ring so most of it um, because I have a massive rocket now as you can see we're gonna try and land this this is the first time this has ever launched it's using five vector engines I kind of don't want to call it the Pulsar Y I kind of want to call it the Pulsar 5 now kind of like the Saturn 5 because it reminds me of that a little bit um, annoyingly I didn't really put enough fuel in to slow down and because my ascent was so steep it comes down way too fast and just slams into the ocean that the parachute just can't be pulled and we lose that, which is a shame because that's incredibly expensive. But hey, first launch of a new rocket, bad things often happen. But yes, here we are in orbit because we did push this straight into orbit. And this is the core. You can see the um, nuclear engines. There are four of them. Their fuel tanks kind of encircle the... Uh, well, it's actually not quite a circle. It's sort of offset. But um, yes, they surround the core. And you may be wondering, is that another engine back there? Yes, that is a vector engine with two... Um, half liquid fuel fuel tanks because sometimes I'm going to need more of a kick like leaving the Kerbin system it'll give me about 400 meters per second um, of you know high power thrust so that I don't have to wait around for ages for those nuclear engines to get me out of there you may be noticing that I'm not a big fan of waiting around for long burns but this will be able to go to Duna and back it could go to Eve um, if I it could potentially go to Joule, actually, but it doesn't have quite enough life support. But anyway, we're gonna get uh, we're gonna decouple that second stage there, that gargantuan second stage. We're gonna turn it around and we're gonna fly it on back um, and deorbit it, obviously, and uh, land it very close to the space center, as you'll see in the next shot. It gets very close to the space center. I'm getting quite good at this. Uh, yes, it may have looked like I was talking about this for the second stage uh, for the kind of. Um, high power engine on the Duna spacecraft, but no, there's a, there was one above that, as you may have been able to see, with a vector engine, which uh, has its um, gimbling kind of uh, throttled back a bit. But anyway, this lands on the ocean quite nicely, and we get, uh, I think, 35,000 funds back for it, so it's very expensive, so you can kind of get an idea of how much money we lost on the first stage. But anyway, you may remember a few episodes ago, um, we sent a uh, spacecraft down to Moho again, <laughs> and I forgot all of the scientific equipment, but it doesn't matter because we got a mission to put a satellite in orbit, in a polar orbit of MOHO. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to use these arc jet thrusters, very efficient, um, using monopellant and uh, electric charge to slow ourselves down. So here we are just kind of doing the first stage of our burn. It does take a while. It's about a 20 minute burn. Not too bad because it has no scientific equipment on it, but that's fine. That's not its mission now. Its mission is just to get into that orbit and everything will be rather dandy. Um, so yeah, we're just going to carry this on it's looking it's looking pretty good I mean the problem I have usually is I, I do too much of the burn too early and that takes me too long to get down to moho so I actually end up uh, um, be, uh, kind of over burning a little bit which I do here because as you'll see in a second um, uh, kind of here-ish with the fade there we go yeah you'll see I've actually basically done the whole burn um, and I'm like 20 minutes away because I wasn't checking my real time to periapsis but it's fine we're gonna get into orbit and we have so much delta v on this that this should be fine it's gonna pay off quite nicely and it will provide um well firstly a nice view of moho from really high above it and also maybe just a secondary communication device because we're probably gonna send like a, another probe to moho uh, just just the one we have a mission for it potentially um, and yeah, it's always, you know, it's always good to just keep exploring planets. I'm not going to stop. I mean, my Duna mission is a year away. That will be much faster than it would be otherwise, because I'm pretty much done with my Kerbin activities after a lot of episodes. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, there are a few missions in between that. I've got to send something down to Eve, probably send something back to Drez. I think I may have a Jewel and Elu window, but that might be after the Duna window. 
Um, but I guess we'll see. Anyway, so yeah, we're going to do a quick inclination change um, so that we can go up and meet the orbit after we've done a prograde burn. And then we're going to do another inclination change to put us into the right orbit so that we can complete the mission and get the money. The all-important money. The only thing we care about in Carthenia, I mean, just on Kerbin generally, this isn't that serious. <laughs> anyway, yes, sir. The final uh, inclination change, we still have a ton of Delta V, because arc jet thrusters for the win. Now, I guess I could use ion engines, but they're a little slower, and I haven't actually unlocked them yet. There are still a few things on the tech tree I haven't unlocked. There's some bigger probes, there's RTGs, which would be really nice for that mission to Elu I just sent. But hey, that has giant solar panels, I'm sure it'll be fine. We got the best solar panels. Uh, <laughs> we actually did, those were the best solar panels. Um, anyway, so yeah, we're just gonna uh, go along a little bit more, and you can get see this really nice shot of... Um, above Moho, which you rarely see because usually you're quite low down near Moho. And then I'm going to do a quick um, radial burn, I want to say, so that it pushes my periapsis up and my apoapsis down, and that'll push me into the correct orbit. And we will complete our mission getting 130, 40 ish thousand funds, and that's quite nice. So yeah, we will put that towards that booster we lost. Um, I'm just going to have a quick sip of coffee, as per usual these days. Hmm. But anyway, here we are on the moon. We've been um, uh, we've been told to plant a flag, even though we already have one. But they're like, yeah, we'll give you seventy five grand for this, and we're like, okay. So we put it down. Um, I just cancel it because I'm going to take it right back down. I'm not a very good businessman. I I'm, don't pay me to plant flags. I'll just take them right back down. We got the money. We take it down, and yeah. Bit of free money. That's a nice thing. We get a lot of free money this episode, as you'll see. And then we're going to get back into our, our, our habitation module. The moon base looking rather beautiful right now. But that we're not done. There is a lot of things left to do on the moon base. Um, uh, one of the important things is re-solar paneling that rover. So I'm going to use a bunch of the extra solar panels, which I don't need, which are left over on um, these, these vehicles I landed a while ago. Um, because they're in a good place now. They don't need power anymore. And they have additional solar panels. Um, these are just kind of other random solar panels I sort of put on there. So I'm going to grab a couple of these. Um, I'm going to head on over. I'm going to nip off these broken solar panels. If you remember in my big rover voyage, they kind of flipped off and broke. And I'm going to place this on here quite nicely. These don't retract, but it's fine because if they break, I'll just keep using the solar panels I'm not using. We're going to put the other one on there after taking the other one off. We're going to store the rest of the broken solar panels in some of these containers, um, and then we're going to go fetch another solar panel, just I think from the module next to this one, and place it on here. And now we are fully solar paneled again, and the rover is ready for another voyage if I so desire to take it on one. Um, but yes, and we're also going to transmit the science back that we've researched so far from the lab, because this is being a rather successful mission already. The labs are so useful, it's meant that I don't really have to worry about research, uh, about kind of um, doing experiments at all. But yes, anyway, that's sent back. And also, we'll send back the huge amount of science we got on the station. I, I get like 500 science very frequently from the station. And we'll unlock some bigger probe cores, because hey, who doesn't love bigger probe cores? Monsters. Monsters don't love, love bigger probe cores. Anyway, the main focus of this um, uh, this video today is, of course, the Duna spacecraft. So, we have prepared ourselves um, the next little module. We've put it on a Starlight 1, our newest, uh, well, actually our second newest rocket now. The light one, which I've um, replaced all of the old pulsars with, because it has a very high lifting capability, and it's much smaller than the Pulsar 3, which is rather nice. So we're just going to push ourselves on into orbit and do that. But yes, uh, I have to say the um, vector engine, ridiculously good. I usually just turn down the gimbal and use it as a normal engine. You can see how effective it was with the um, Saturn, well, the Pulsar Y. The Pulsar Y will need some more residual fuel. I don't really know what I was thinking. I put less on it than this spacecraft has uh, in residual fuel. Um, which was foolish. I thought it would slow down more in the atmosphere, but it just it just didn't because it was so steep. So if I did a, a better launch trajectory, maybe that would work. But yeah, anyway, this is the habitation module. It looks a little weird, but you'll see for why um, in a little bit. The probe is just mounted to the side because that's going to decouple, and it also offsets the mass of the RCS store on the other side. Um, and if it decouples cleanly, then it can be another... Um, a communication satellite in low carbon orbit. I have like a gajillion of them, but you know. Anyway, so we slow this down. I actually used a huge amount of fuel to slow down because we had a pretty similar problem where we were coming in quite fast, but it, it was fine because this has loads of fuel. And then we'll recover that, get our money back, go back to orbit, and uh, with, this is in orbit now, but we uh, just tweak it so that we're going to encounter the um, Duna spacecraft again 
pick a name for that, throw it in the comments. If I'll pick the best one, and if you're not even giving me good um, ones, I'll just pick my own one. But I'm sure you will. I think I've I've done this sort of thing before, and I usually get quite good names. So yeah, if you have a name in mind, definitely uh, just leave it in the comments. Make it cool. Make it awesome. You know, you know, or don't make it blood for the blood god. That guy who I know is going to say that, but I don't mind because that made me laugh for like an hour. Uh, <laughs> anyway, when I try to dock. Um, the solar panels kind of get in the way, and I was hoping they'd just break, but they're much stronger than I thought, and when I try again a little faster, they still don't break, so I decide to fly past the uh, spacecraft and just nip them off. There we go, because we don't need these. We've got a tunnel of electric charge. Um, it also means that this won't be uh, a communications satellite because it won't have any solar panels, which kind of sucks, but it's fine, because the important thing is that we dock these on. Anyway, the reason they're on extremities and the reason they're going on the side is that they're going to act almost like... Um, an artificial gravity chamber, really, um, as you can see here, um, that they, they're kind of on, they jut out. But anyway, let's try and get rid of this probe. Um, it kind of sort of explodes a bit when I decouple it. Um, I do find a couple of bits, so you can see I'm just kind of looking off here, and you can see some debris. Um, and uh, yeah, we switch to it and see some some bits of debris. But yes, these um, they're obviously artificial gravity doesn't really matter in KSP, and it's not like it's not like I built a ring, but I've put them out to the side so you can imagine that the spacecraft could spin and they could have a little bit of gravity in those modules. But yes, so we're gonna land this um, on the ground, quite near the KSC actually, and yeah, I'm gonna recover it. But I think that spacecraft should be pretty effective. Um, it's got enough. Uh, Crew capacity for, I think, 13 Kerbals, but it'll only be taking 6, so I think that's a fair amount for a long mission, uh, really, without going too crazy. I like to put a little extra um, space in the spacecraft for the Kerbals. But anyway, yes, yeah, so here we are on MOHO. I'm using a little bit of electric charge in the dark to send back some scientific data uh, so that we can complete a mission just because we've been told to send back some scientific data from the surface of MOHO. Kind of annoying that it has such a long kind of rotational period on Moho, because a lot of the time spent in the dark, but I had enough electric charge to send this back. We got a nice chunk of money, and that's good. Along a similar vein, on Gilly, we uh, have pretty much the same mission, but from the space around Gilly. So I uh, fire up uh, the scientific equipment, start sliding down the hill, because there's just no friction, and uh, at the last minute, I think I tried to jump into the... Oh, no, I didn't jump into the air. That was from the ground, so that didn't work. So I try and take another one by kind of taking off a bit. Um, and annoyingly, the real problem is that there's like a more than a minute signal delay, so I have to kind of wait for a while. And I don't have enough fuel to stay in the uh, space above Gilly for very long, so I'm just kind of jumping a bit. And I also just lost connection there was the problem, and lost a solar panel. But I got my connection back so I can do this again. Um, and I'm going to transmit the data, and yeah... That didn't work, because apparently that was from the surface of Gilly. So I was like, okay, fair enough. I was pretty close. So I jumped really high into the air. Um, you can see I'm, well, not the air, but you know the vacuum. Anyway, uh, but I'm really high above Gilly. Well, relatively high. I get my scientific data. I transmit it back. That doesn't work, so I kind of go into the debug menu and hit accept. Because I'm in space above Gilly. Uh, so yeah, we transmit that back. We get the money. Um, I think that was fair. And then we have to land it. I used all of my fuel to jump into the air, so I kind of lose the engine. But that's fine, because I'm out of fuel. And this orbiter will kind of find its final resting place a little later after slowing down for ages. It finally comes to a stop where it will exist for eternity. Anyway, so this is the final part of this video. I know it's a little bit shorter than usual. It's because uh, these things happen more quickly than I thought they would. But anyway, we're also testing out the Duna base. Yes, I'm going to try and land the Duna base all in one, effectively, because... Um, otherwise, it's going to be really hard because I'd have to dock these bits together um, using wheels, and that never really works. So I've strapped this to a solid rocket booster, which is inexplicably turned over, and I'm going to try and land it. Basically, it's covered in parachutes, and it has a few engines and a bunch of fuel on top looking kind of ugly right now. I'll try and fix that in the future. Um, but yeah, so this is a bunch of the base pack I've been using for the moon base. However... Um, it's got a big nice core which fits six Kerbals and a bunch of stuff on the outside which we'll look at uh, in, in more detail later. But anyway, you can see it's really offset this time because um, one of the parachutes didn't pull. So I fire up these high gimbling engines. These are the radial gimbling engines. Um, and we land sort of safely. A few explosions. We lose a bunch of landing legs. But it's not nothing terrible. Um, so if that other parachute had pulled, I reckon that would have gone a little better. But yes, this is my first mock-up for the Duna base. It's got the big central core. Um, here we've got a garage for a small rover, which I think is a really cool part. 
Um, we've also got a science lab, obviously, a bunch of additional habitation, a cupola module for looking out and admiring Duna, and we've also got somewhere where we can grow food. Yes, I've decided to attach that to the base. I'm going to have a separate life support module, um, but this is going to be able to grow its own food in this greenhouse I just deployed, and I think that'll be rather cool, This because this is going to be a permanent base. I mean, the mission will be temporary, but we will keep going back. I mean, I'm thinking of at least two missions, you know, um, and they will be more quick than this. They won't be each 50 episodes, but yes, so that went sort of well, but I think we can do better. I think we can place the parachutes better, and I think we can land this base properly. I know this isn't exactly like Duna because the parachutes are way more effective, but that's why I have the engines. So anyway, we've strapped it to the solid rocket booster again. We've put some more kind of turny wings on it so I can turn it, and it does pretty much the same thing anyway. I escape from the booster, I pull the chutes, and all of them deploy this time because I've put a little bit of metal upwards so that I've mounted a booster on, uh, mounted one of the parachutes above the um, cargo bay because it thought it was stowed in the cargo bay so it wouldn't pull. And we land a little hard again and lose a few landing legs, but I think that one went better. But anyway, yes, yeah, so you can get a look at my idea for a um, Duna base. And yeah, I think it should be quite cool. Um, there will be a few other modules around it, but I kind of want it to be mostly kind of an in-one type thing. So yeah, I think that's looking pretty good. I, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you do come up for uh, with a name for my kind of Duna transfer vehicle. I think it would be quite cool. And in future episodes, we will be launching a bunch of stuff because I'm going really hard into this uh, Duna mission. We've got a proper kind of um, resource station we're going to have up there. We're going to obviously have the base. We're going to have a ton of crap, which we'll see more in future episodes. And it'll be great. But anyway, if you would like to check out other videos, there is a video I did yesterday on Party Hard, which was just a bit of fun. I go around, I murder a bunch of dudes. Um, there is the most recent episode of Fall of Kerbin, which you should check out. I totally murder Penguin's fleet in a naval fleet battle, which was rather fun. But yes, and there are also links to my Twitter, Twitch, and Patreon in the description, and I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been KSP with Tape. I will see you next time.